I'm Jim Beheim came here to Greensboro. Lost his final game on a buzzer beater, 47 seasons. He'd been the head coach at Syracuse. He'd been in the Syracuse community since arriving as a player in 1962. Cost it curmudgeonly, sometimes comical, sort of a bittersweet, mostly bitter moment when Beheim stepped aside. For most of this year, I really didn't think about retirement, which is true of every year. I think some people have had me being you know, retired about 10 different times, but when we lost those four games, I felt that this was the time. I'm thrilled to be retired. I felt better the last two days than I felt in 47 years. Syracuse basketball is being left in the best of hands. I am a new voice, a new face, with new ideas, but the standards that have Help build this program will not change. There's Adrian Autry, the new head coach at Syracuse, obviously steeped in the Orange tradition as he takes over for a legend. Jim Beheim, second on the all time wins list, had a glorious career. This entire transition was a little bit awkward, at least for a while, until it sort of got smoothed over yesterday. Yeah, it has been awkward, but you think about what Jim Beheim has accomplished, and you think about the players, and you think about the coaches that he coached against. I started to make a list, like Pearl, Coleman, uh, uh, Sherman Douglas, uh, coaches, John Thompson, Luke Carnesecca, Roby Massimino, Jim Calhoun, Jay Wright, wow. Coach K, Roy, they've all gone, wow. right? Jim survived. He continued to do his thing, and that's great, but the time was right, and it was also, the time was also right for Adrian Autry. Adrian Autry was my assistant at Virginia Tech. He didn't miss any steps. He was a high school assistant coach. He coached in grassroots basketball. He was director of basketball operations. He was a video coordinator, and then he was an assistant coach. Because he didn't skip any steps, he is more than qualified. He's a terrific leader, a great communicator, uh, a guy that absolutely has an incredible work ethic. Adrian Autry will do a great job following a legend. Yeah, and, and look, this was a difficult situation. It always is. I think when, when a coach decides to retire, step away, it, it's difficult for any coach to go out the exact way you'd like to. But that's all secondary to really the celebration of an extraordinary career. And I'm not sure there are words to put into context what Jim Beheim has accomplished at Syracuse over his tenure there. Uh, 47 years, I think it is, and to win over 1,000 games, win a national championship, five uh, wow. Final Fours. Mm -hmm. But all those amazing uh, battles they had in the Big East and, you know, your list of players, you know, you can go back L Lewis Orr and Roosevelt Bowie and Danny yeah. Shays and all those, and Marty Head, Leo <laughs> Routens, all, all those great, and Marty Head should be the patron saint of bald men on campus. <laughs> <laughs> he's that, He's got to be the patron saint. <laughs> But, but Jim has been a character. He's also a man of character. And I don't, he, he's kind of like when you look at, when you think of UCLA or Indiana, you, you think of Wooden first and then Bob Knight first. You'll always, and Red Autry's going to do a great job, but you'll always think of Jim Beheim first when, when Syracuse basketball is mentioned, always. Yeah, he recruited me. Uh, in fact, my visit to Syracuse was my fourth and final visit. Uh, our sons got a chance to play with each other at Brewster Academy, Buddy Beheim, my younger son, Walter. So I've always had this strong affection uh, for him and who he was as a person. I mean, have somebody of his magnitude coming to East St. Louis, Illinois, and do a home visit at my home. I mean, incredible, right? I just want to see him go out the right way. And to your point, Jay, uh, with a week or so leading up to it, we, we weren't sure if he was going to retire. Was he staying? And there's just kind of this cloud that I thought was starting to taint his legacy. And as I speak of legacy, I always like when coaches leave and they leave the cupboard full. I mean, he's got to, Adrian Hotchery is being left with some really good players. Judah Mintz, Chris Bell, Malik Brown, and Benny Williams, assuming all of those guys stay. And so from a legacy standpoint, I'm glad he made the decision now so that Red gets an opportunity to, to re-recruit the guys who are already That's so talented and in this program as as well as try to bring other guys into it. Yeah, and even though it may not have been handled the exact right way, sure. I get it. I kind of look at it the way Willie Mays career ended with the New York Mets in the World Series in 1974. That's not the lead story. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the lead story is Willie Mays is one of the greatest players to ever play, you know, the Say Hey Kid. And it's the same thing with Jim Beheim. You're left with the incredible legacy. Yes. And, oh, okay, the last day wasn't handled right. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, that, that's secondary. Greensboro is pretty interesting. It, it, well, he, loves is, yeah. uh, he, he, compla he complained at the Waffle House. Yeah. If they'd done it at the Waffle House, yeah. Yeah. that would have been, been perfect. Thank you.
for, for those who might have been, when Syracuse joined the ACC, Beheim complained a little bit, but there was even an olive branch extended from the city of Greensboro, mm-hmm. congratulating Jim on his career. At the <laughs> Olive Garden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard Mike Bray, I heard Mike Bray after their loss in the ACC tournament was at the Waffle House after the game. Oh, wow. Now, how perfect is that? <laughs> that almost, the as linebacker, as almost as good as the linebacker. The linebacker. <laughs> last home game, Waffle House. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.